Hello there and welcome to Zion Dew, a production of Hekima Center. We are glad you tuned in and you are glad you are listening. It's always a privilege, a pleasure to share the word of God with you, to encourage one another and to bless one another. So today we will be talking about maturing as sons. You know, for the, first, for the last few, for a while now actually, uh, Pastor Arnold has been teaching us about the seven spirits of the Lord. And uh, those, uh, the, 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 that teaching is on YouTube. You can always catch up. But I will not go into it. I will leave it at that. But so when we began, he began teaching, I, I, I began to wonder and I was asking, so why are we learning about this? Why where are you, we using this? Why should we do, you know, those why, why questions? But I got to understand that, you know, as sons, and, you know, like from where we are and where we, we are going, for us to fulfill the assignments those that God, our God has given us, we will need to engage heaven. We will need heavenly resources. We will need to mature and grow and move from one level to another. You, you will remember that and you all already know that, you know, when you got born again, uh, you received the spirit of sonship by whom you call Abba, Father. And... The Holy Spirit is always there, you know, reminding you and convincing you and just whispering to you that you are his beloved child, you are his beloved son, his beloved daughter. But again, now, you know, the, this sonship, sonship is a, a process of identity. You know, just beginning to get to know who you are, beginning to get to know your purpose, who you are in him and your purpose and why you are here or not, you are all here, you are your you know, what you're meant to release down here. You just begin to understand your anointing, your, your giftings, and things like that. But you know what? You cannot stay there. You need to move. And I, I, I'm not saying you, you, you stop being a son. You'll always be a son. But this sonship, you know, like the, where you are, you, you, you need to be looking at, the, at that place. You know, there's always a place called uh, beyond this point, beyond here. And there, beyond there, there's more. There, there are things, they, you know, they, they, things are bigger, they are better. There are opportunities, there is excitement, there is just everything. And we need to just be moving forward, moving to level after level. And so this, the, you know, like this sonship actually is uh, normally is a platform which propels us to another stage we will call for now, we call it partnership. And partnership is also a process of responsibility. It's about taking partnering with, with, the, with, with our Father, partnering with heaven, and taking responsibility. And as you take responsibility, uh, you begin to build on earth as it is in heaven. And as you build on earth as it is in heaven, this is when now you begin to need and involve wisdom. You will need to involve uh, understanding, knowledge, because you are building, and uh, what we see from uh, Proverbs 24, 3 and, and four, uh, 3 and 4, uh, Proverbs 3 and, uh, 24, 3 and 4 tells us, uh, by wisdom, a house is built, and through understanding, is established. Through knowledge, uh, the rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. And so when you begin to build, you are attracting resources of heaven. When you begin to, to, to build, you are, you, you are attracting wisdom. You will need wisdom. You will need, uh, when you begin to take responsibility, let's say you are taking responsibility for, for your city, you will need capacity more, you know, bigger and more than what you have. You will need more resources for than what you have. You will need to partner with heaven. And, you know, sometimes... Not really sometimes, but it's very interesting to look at the life of the disciples of Jesus and how they moved from stage to stage and how they matured and how they got, you know, they engaged in the things that Jesus was doing and how they moved from being, just seeing and from being spectators to taking the world by storm. What do I mean? You know, when we begin reading John 1, we see... Uh, verse 29, we see John. And what John is doing is introducing Jesus to, 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 to us. He's introducing Jesus to them. And he says, look, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. 
at that point, they are being introduced to, to Jesus just to know him, so that the next time they meet him on the road, they will know this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now, not much to it, just that. No participation, no invitation of, 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 of anything more than just, you know, knowing him. And later we find Jesus, uh, verse 39 of the same chapter, John 1, Jesus is inviting the disciples, his di disciples, and he says, come, he replied, and you will see. And so at this point, he's just inviting them to see, like come and see where I stay, come and see the things I do, come and see the miracle, the signs and wonders, come and witness, be a witness, see, you know, the demonstration of power, that's what I want to see, be, come, just just watch what, uh, as I do this. But they move, you know, like from there, they, uh, they, they, Jesus moves them and invites them to a higher and more demanding and more demanding their commitment level of following. When you look at uh, verse 43, uh, I read, the next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said, follow me. And you see this following, it, 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 it's a... You know, a, a place where you need, or they needed, they were required to change the direction. If they were going to the north, and Jesus is going to the east, you needed to accompany Jesus and go to the east. If you are, you are thinking of going fishing, and Jesus is going to maybe Galilee, Samaria, you need to stop what you're doing and go with him. A place of changing direction totally for his glory. And it did not end there. When we look at uh, Matthew 16, 24, 25, I read, then Jesus said to his disciples, If any desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for, for my sake will find it. And this is a place where, or a stage in life where they were being told to just deny yourself, die to self. You know, the things which you thought mattered to you, if they don't matter to me, really don't hold on them. Don't hold on to them. Drop your plan if it does not matter to me, if it does not, uh, uh, if it's not taking you to where we are going, just drop it. This is a place where they got to, to, to say, you know, not my will, but your will, and turning all around all together. And you see, as we look at the, uh, as we look at this, the, this, you know, this, the, this, uh, uh, these stages, we are seeing them moving from just looking and just seeing without participating, and then we see them again. They are moved into participating. They are following that stage of following, and then there is a stage of denying themselves, and they move the further. We see them, you know, even. Uh, uh, sitting on the same table with the Jesus, we see them watching Jesus, you know, ascending to heaven, and from there they take responsibility, and they begin to preach, they begin to start churches, and that's how come we have a gospel today, and that's why we have Christianity today. Just imagine if they stayed in one place, the place of seeing. What would have happened? I do not know, but they did not, they did not stay there. They kept moving to higher levels. So even as I conclude, I am going to encourage you that as you follow Jesus, as you mature in Jesus, for every level of depth, every movement you move up, uh, upward uh, to the next stage, there is a level of sacrifice. But then the sacrifice is just not, it's, it's not too much. Because the sacrifice will be something like, you know, inquiring, will be like seeking and pursuing. But the good thing is we have a comfort, we have a reassurance, a promise that when we seek, we find, that we find in uh, Psalms, uh, sorry, not Psalms, but Ma Matthew 7, 7 and 8, and it says, ask and you will be given, it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open for it to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. So begin to seek. Seek to move beyond where you are. Beyond where you are, there is another level. Just keep moving. Where, 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 where you are now is not the final stage. You know, I, I also think of, uh, of, of John. You know, John is in the, in the, John the Revelator. He's in the, he's in, uh, the island of Patmos. Uh, John is in the spirit. And he writes these letters to the churches. 
And after writing these letters, when you go to chapter 4 of the Revelation, you find he's being called, you know, come up here. You know, I, I, I thought he was already up there, but you see there is also another level he's being called up to. And he goes and he sees this open door and he sees, you know, many other things he had not seen before because he has gone up. You know, it's just, it's just like, wow, wow, wow. There was so much, you know, and there's so much in the next level. And so I will encourage you to keep seeking because, and, and do not stay at that place of identity because when you stay there, you will miss on opportunities to partner with our Father. So I encourage you to take responsibility and partner with heaven. Shalom. Let's pray. Father, we bless you and we honor you. We thank you because we're always calling us to deeper. We are all calling us to closer to you. Thank you, Father, for your teaching us how to take responsibility, how to partner with you. And we bless you because you're always there. And we bless you because the resources are there. And thank you, Father. We honor you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen and amen.